Hi guys. So you want to be your best self. First of all, you got to get you one of these. <laughs> I'm kidding. This isn't sponsored. But imagine if it was sponsored. This is a fake. But, but I digress. So you want to be your best self. That's great. Sit down so I can destroy your worldview. And nitpick at the word best self because I actually don't like it. It's going to be a great ride. Buckle up and get ready. Let's go. Hi, guys. This is the Hippie Art Podcast. I'm your host, Farah, also known as Farah. And today, we're going to be talking about how to be your best self, but with a little twist, okay? I usually like to have my videos for everybody. That's because it, it is actually for everybody, no matter how specific sometimes and niche it gets in the islamic world i still want it to be for everybody because anyone and everyone can benefit but i specifically chose today's title what is today's title your best self is when you find allah i picked that title and you know i i thought about changing allah to god so that it would encompass a lot more people like your best self is when you find god but that's something that like Christians would write. With all due respect, Christians. I love my Christian viewers. But like that's just to us Muslims, I don't know. Just putting the word God instead of Allah feels not good. It feels not right. To me personally, it doesn't feel right. Because God has a name, Allah. Allah. Right? The one and only. So like why would I put God to make more people feel comfortable? When in essence I made this podcast to make people uncomfortable. You get what I mean, right? This was something that my mom said in a conversation when we were in Mecca. And she said it out of nowhere. She was talking to my brother about something. And she was like, you find your best self when you find Allah. And it like, and I was eating crispy chicken when I heard that. So it didn't like really register properly. But when it replayed in my brain and I sat with it and I pondered it, I was like, wait. Wait. I was... Like, don't ask me why that, like, shook my world. Because I think in deep inside, I know that. I already knew that. Yes, you find your best self when you find Allah. When you find Allah, that's it. You have found your truest and, and most beautiful self. There's nothing else about it. Like, I knew that. But the way she phrased it, I think it's because the idea of best self, you know, finding your best self, building your best life, living your best life. All of these things are, um, I, I would say, phrasing that is getting popularized on social media, uh, but in a completely different context, in a completely different way of life and living. Like, it would be more likely from that girl than any other person, you know. That girl would make a vlog living my best life, and then she would show things in her life like grabbing coffee and walking her dog and all of that. And I'm not, you know, saying anything about that, but I'm just saying that's m mainly the context that it comes about, you know. But I never associated, like, best life, like, that life with Allah and, like, being Muslim and all of that. Like, it's not like I felt like I was missing out, but it's just my brain never connected or associated the two, you know, because it comes back to redefining best life what even is best life i'm living my best life great what are you doing is sipping iced coffee all you do is that your best life it's about to finish are you gonna go grab another one is that your best life no like i know this is like it's coming out a little bit weird it's like whoa calm down farah you're literally taking hits at millions of people i know that and that's why i made this podcast but but I'm just trying to get at the core of what the message is. What is best life? What is it? And wow, this is just like an excellent start to the video. I am already berating the viewers. What is best life? Sorry, guys. But no, really. I would love for the viewer, right? You. Hello. I would like for you to define what is best life? Best version of yourself. Best version of life. Like, what even is it? You know, and I saw this definition that uh, I, I came across on the web, the World Wide Web. And it said, 
the best self, I would say, not best life, but the best self is a self in all of us that we want to be. It's the combination of all of our goals and purposes. And this is by Kristen Glosserman, the author of the book, Practical and Inspirational Lessons to Move in a Positive Direction. Now let's nitpick at this definition, because I like it. I really like it. She says, this is the self that's already in all of us. That's the first part of the definition. I love that. It's already in all of us. A lot of people think, no, it's like an external thing. Like when they think someday I'm going to be this, it's outside. It's in the future. It's outside of myself. It's not in my control right now. It's like, no, who told you that? Who told you that you are not capable and you don't have the tools to get to where you want to be? Because you do. But a lot of people are going to try and sell you things to make you think that that's not true. When it is, and, but that's like a whole other conversation and a separate conversation at that of you already have everything that you need. You know, granted, granted that you are financially taken care of. I have to put that out there because some people do not know that nuances exist um, and that special cases exist. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, yes, yeah, so it's already in all of us. And it's a combination of all of our goals and purposes. Now, <laughs> this is going to get really uncomfortable. Because what is it going to make you ask? What question is it going to make you bring up? What's your purpose? What is your purpose, love? What is it? Why are you here? I feel like I'm at a store asking a random customer, why are you here? I think, if anything, this video is like a continuation of a video that I did a long time ago called Finding Yourself. And I talk about this. I talk about finding yourself. Surprise, surprise. And I also talk about purpose. And I talk about what makes you, you, you know, and how to like affirm that and not have it be from other people or like other people write onto you what you are. But, but that's like not who you are, where right? you have to find that for yourself and you have to build that yourself. And so I, the question of purpose, obviously for Muslims is very straightforward it's to worship Allah. There's no other purpose. You know, our purpose is very set and clear, but like to other people, what is your purpose? What is the reason? Why are you here? Why do you think you're here? You know, and when you realize why you're here like you can imagine how the world would be if you weren't here and you could tell that there would be some sort of difference and there would be i mean give yourself credit there could be a different i don't know you guys never know fake a death so you might find out but your best self really is when you take your purpose why you're e even here and you take your goals and aspirations and everything that you want to achieve in life and then you combine these two so seamlessly that they become one. That's your best self. That's you. That's who you want to be at the end of the tunnel. Thing is, you already have these two. You might not know them. You might not be acquainted with them. But these two things are already in you. Like they're already there. You just have to find them. You have to figure them out. But you know, here's one thing that I really liked. And it's the way that Kristen Glosserman, the one that gave the definition for best self, how she chose to title her book. Her, the title of the book is called Practical and Inspirational Lessons to Move You in a Positive Direction. You're here, okay? You're in this space and time that is right now. And you want your best self, and your best self is in this specific direction at this specific place and time. That's where your best self is. And so she acknowledges the fact that there is direction involved. And that you have to nudge yourself in the right direction. It's not 38 degrees. No, it's more 40 degrees. And then you're set on the right path. Right. And what does Islam, what is even like the first chapter in the Quran talking about? What is it talking about? It says, mustaqim. Guide us on the straight path. Put us directly on the straight path. Like, don't lead us to it. No, put us on it. Because the thing is, you can find yourself to the straight path from virtually anywhere. Because you're not, like, going to it. You're placed on it. 
it's it's the direction you're on the right direction you're on the right path and so when I associated these two finding your best self but then also you need direction you need guidance you need to be nudged in the right direction and path and like specific angle to find your best self and the thing is you already have everything in you like you already have that best self within you but it just takes being on the right path to figure out who that best self even is now guys listen i am notoriously known for taking hits at the english language okay for how superficial it is now english speakers if that's the only language you know i'm sorry okay really from the bottom of my heart i'm sorry but you have to trust me when I say, and this is not me saying it in like a petulant way, right? Like, like we're better. No, no. Although it is true, but no, no that was a joke, guys. Um, is that the Arabic language is a whole other world. Words are not just words. Okay, words have like characteristics, like there is a word for a camel of a specific color and gender and height. There's a word for that. Yeah, it's not just camel. No, no, I wish it worked like that, but no. Okay, it's, it gets really specific and it's like rich and deep and just like so like crazy. Arabic is crazy. It's my, yes, it's my mother tongue and I'm saying that it's crazy. I have the right to say that. Um, but yeah, so what I'm trying to get at is that words have characteristics and words are more than just words. So imagine the Quran as a whole, 600 pages of just Arabic words. Yeah, it can get a little hectic sometimes. Now let's nitpick at the ayah that's composed of three words. Okay. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Three words. Guys, I'm going to take about 20 minutes to explain three words. Buckle up. Okay, kind of 20 minutes, but... I'm going to be the really annoying teacher that makes sure that you know these three words like you know your name. Bismillah, let's go. Ihdina. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Now, ihdina translates to guide us. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us on the straight path. And I love this word, hidaya. You know, ihdina is like a, um, what's that a form of speech? of an imperative is no declarative thank you it's a declarative uh word in form of speech like like give me that or or show me guide us that's basically a declarative part of a sentence guide us to the straight path if you take the word hidina and put it in noun form you know which is an abstract noun guidance it's hidaya you know so we went from hidina ila hidaya and I love the word guidance because what even is guidance? Imagine you're stranded in the middle of a forest and you have a map. The map is going to guide you, right? But how do you how do you use the map to get to where you want to be as a guide? Like how do you use the map to help guide you? You need to use your brain. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying you need to use critical thinking. That's what guidance is, is you actually need to use your brain. You know, and it's really, I'm really not trying to throw shade at anyone, but, but we think guidance is just going to like come and take us and like save us, you know, from where we are. No, no, we need to use our brain, you know, and one ayah in the Quran that I like, I sometimes cannot even fathom. It's uh, in Surah Taha, in ayah 50, where Allah says, Allah, our Lord, is the one who has given everything its distinctive form and then guided it. So this makes you think that guidance comes in different forms. Allah gave everything its distinctive form and then guided it. In Tafsir al-Tabari, when it's talking about ihdina, in Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, it's talking about how guidance comes in different grades. It's not just guidance and that's it, the end all be all. What this ayah is trying to get at is that everything knows what to do on its own because Allah gave it that guidance. How does our heart know how to beat? How does our brain know how to fire? 
How do birds know how to go out of their nest and get food and come back? How do they, how do they know? How do ants know how to not get crushed by our feet? How do they know how to get food? How do, how do animals know? How do plants know how to photosynthesize? How does everything know how to be? You know, that's freaking crazy. When you think about guidance in that way, Allah is guiding every single thing. Because at the end of the day, He's the creator. He's the one who created all of this. He's going to give it the guidance that it needs. And everything comes in its distinctive form. Guidance of all creations differ from one another. And they're so unique. And they're so different. And they're so vast. But at the end of the day, they're so complementary too. They don't work independently. They work almost interdependently. Like... Each one is dependent on the other. We work as an entire ecosystem at the end of the day. It's crazy if you wrap your head around just that fact. The fact of how everything works on its own, but that everything is still contingent on something else. That's mind-boggling to me. I don't know about you guys, but that's like just in and of itself, that fact, that idea of guidance, that way of looking at guidance is that everything was created and guided in a certain way. Because if everything was just created and then that's that, there'd be freaking chaos. No, Nothing would know how to function. It, it would all go so haywire so very fast. Like I said, Hidayah comes in different forms. But what is an even deeper level of Hidayah, what is a deeper level of guidance, is almost like the guidance of the soul. right? Like Allah said, Allah created everything and gave it its distinct form and then guided it. But then there's the soul. The soul we, is not tangible. We can't see it. We don't even like know how it looks like. The soul is a whole other topic of conversation. What is the soul? You know. But when we're talking about deeper levels of guidance, it's talking about taking the soul and bringing it back home. Guiding it back to where it's supposed to go, where it's supposed to be. Where it feels the most at home. You know. So when Allah talks about Take our soul, put it on the right path. And not only that, the special thing about this type of guidance, you know, the guidance that's referred to in this ayah, the guidance that is so deep, it's like deeper than any type of other guidance, is that it has more association with Allah. It's more connected to Allah. Allah comes more into play with this type of guidance. It's not like, when Allah gave everything its distinct form and then he guided it. No, that's it. They're guided. They're, everything knows how to do what it has to do. But then this type of guidance, the guidance on the Sirat al-Mustaqim, in Surah Muhammad, Ayah 17, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ زَادَهُمْ هُدًا وَأَتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ As for those who are rightly guided, he increased them in guidance and blessed them with righteousness. He increased them in guidance. Allah gave them more guidance. He didn't just give them one time. He keeps giving them more guidance and more guidance. So Allah comes a lot more into play in this type of guidance because it's the deepest kind of guidance. It's not anything. It's the greatest, deepest gift. And the crazy thing is that in Arabic, Hidayah is close to the word Hadiyah, which is gift. Hidayah is guidance. Hadiyah is gift. Hidayah, Hadiyah. They, it's like guidance is a gift because it is. It is, there's such a close association to that because Allah comes more into play. When Allah comes more into play in something, it becomes limitless. There is no limit, there is no bound to the mercy and the love that can be contained in that thing. And so if we're on that type of guidance, if we have that guidance and we keep asking for that kind of guidance... It's like, that is the best thing that you could ever ask for. Now, let's talk about the words Sirat al Mustaqim. We talked about the words Ihdina, you know, guide us. Sirat al Mustaqim, they kind of come together as Sirat al Mustaqim. You know, they don't come separately very much because here's the thing Sirat is the path, right? And in life, we always face paths. In every step, in every moment, we have choices. We, we can either take choice A or choice B in literally every single second. So back in the day, Arabs actually referred to sirat as path, as decisions, as like the choice that you make. The choices and decisions that you make in an accumulative way. 
you know so like what choice did you make today that's the sirat you know that's the kind of like the path that you're taking and so imagine if it accumulates it's like that's it that's the path that you chose because you're so far in you're so deep in you know and al mustaqim is straight and they used straight as a way to basically say what is right straight means a lack of chaos straight is like the the most orderly thing that you can come up with because it's straight there is no funny business going on you know and so the straight path is almost like you make the right choices over and over because because it's like there's so many choices you know it's the accumulation that matters most because you can make one bad choice that's okay that's not going to like take you completely off the straight path but like you're making good choices as a whole in retrospect in a more general sense so what is the ayah getting at in essence <inaudible> guide us to making the right choices every single time like that's because it's a big deal to make the right choices every single time because it no longer becomes a choice it becomes a lifestyle because you don't pick every single time you know it, it's like taxing on your brain to do that every single time you're picking the right thing you know it's like no your brain has some point starts to go a little bit on auto mode and that's not for every single thing but it's like the fundamental things that you choose to fill your day with and imagine as muslims we say this 17 times a day if not more we ask allah المستقيم, help us in making the right choices help us and guide us on putting us on the right path 17 times a day why because it's one of the greatest dua that you can ever make it's one of the greatest it's the, you're asking allah in essence what you need to get closer to him because the further you go along this path the closer you are to allah and then the closer you are to allah the more you find yourself the more you find your best self and your best life it's so crazy how we're not taught about it in this way you know we're taught about what not to do like don't do this don't do that you know as muslims you shouldn't do this but then we literally neglect the other half of the conversation of you can take these steps to get closer to allah and when you get closer to allah you get closer to your inner self you get more aligned and it there's no end to it there's no end to the best self that you're searching for because allah is limitless allah has no end and this path has no end there's no end to which you can keep getting closer and closer and closer to allah and so like there's no stop to this journey of okay i found my best self i'm good I'm done. That was a fantastic journey. I'm glad I went on it. That's it. I'm my best self now. It never ends. It never ends. But that's the beauty of it. Because Allah never ends. And if it ended, it's like, that's it. Nothing ends except when we're in Jannah, that's it. But before that, nothing, there's no end to it. We keep getting better and better. There's no end to it. It's a struggle, but you keep going. And so with that, I ask you a couple questions to make you even more uncomfortable. When was the last time that you picked up the Quran and you really pondered? You read and you were thinking as you were reading and you were searching for a deeper meaning behind the words and you were trying to get it at the context of what the words were getting at you're trying to understand the text deeper than the text itself what was the last time that you did that when was the last time that you prayed and then you felt like this prayer it's almost as if allah is in front of me and that this prayer is to allah like a prayer that is sincerely out of this world a prayer that you melt into a prayer that you like lose yourself in these questions go back to myself you know i ask myself these questions all the time because 
we forget what matters. We forget that these things are really what will help us. What we should actually be spending our time doing. But then we're tempted with so many other things like, no, but you can be doing this. and then, But this is a lot more fun and stimulating. Yeah, but you have to get this finished, so do it first before that. And so it becomes like, like I'll do it later. Or I'm just not in the vibe to be doing that right now. Like I just don't feel like reading Quran right now. I feel like I'm not in the right headspace to be reading Quran. When really, that is the best thing that you could be doing at that specific moment. Because you might come across an ayah, a verse that is speaking to something that you held inside for so long and you had the answer on your bookshelf the entire time but you chose not to because it's just not the right time right now and this is not for like like do it sporadically like open up a Quran once a month no this is something we should be including in our days but that we forget because I just made the argument that you find your best self when you get closer to Allah how do you get close to Allah that is the question. How do you get close to Allah? He sent his literal words down to our planet Earth. Not a single word has been changed. And I actually plan on making a video on that because it's crazy. Once I realized like the Quran is really a miracle, it's it's not a normal topic of discussion. Like it's it's literally a book of light, you know? It is actually a book of light. But ask yourself when can you be incorporating the Qur'an in your day? The literal words of Allah. That's how you get closer to Allah. And then Allah sent the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A mercy to the world. A mercy. Can you imagine that Allah described a whole human being as a mercy? And so what are we doing not studying him? What are we doing not studying his life? Not trying to breathe the same air that he breathed. You know, not doing the things that he did throughout the day. You know, not taking the little microsecond to sit down as we drink our water because that's how he used to drink water. You know, it's called the sunnah. It's like Allah gave us all of these tools. Allah gave us the map. And like I said before, we just have to use our critical thinking. We have to use our brains, actually. You know, but then we have to keep praying. <laughs> Guide us on the straight path. Help us in making the right decision every single time. Because we're not angels. We're not perfect, you know. Angels are already their best selves. They don't need to worry about that. That's a human issue. That's like our thing. We want to be our best selves, you know? But like, it's a step-by-step -step process because it's a decision at a time. It's one choice at a time. But what's beautiful about it is that it's short-term but long-term at the same time. So it's like, it's each decision you make, but it's the accumulation of each decision you make. If you choose to sit down today and you memorize one ayah, one, just one. That's that's a short-term decision. You do that right now. If you do that long-term, if you do that for a year, how much could you memorize of the Quran? One ayah. How much? How how far would you get? You'd get further than when you started. That's for sure. But it's the accumulation. So we ask Allah, guide us to do that. Guide us to make that right choice every single day. This video, I think, is befitting to people who made New Year's resolutions for 2024. I completely forgot the fact that we entered a new year. Like, when we entered January 1st, I forgot. I was like, just another day? Because it was another day, okay? But I just realized it was no longer 2023. Which is weird to say, but... It is what it is. But I don't really like New Year's resolutions. And it's not because of the whole, like, cringy, um, I don't know, aura around it. Like, New Year, New Me. No, it's just the fact that we can be doing resolutions all the time. But, like, why do we associate it just with the New Year? Okay, we can do it in March, June, 
Why not do it in August? What's the problem with doing it in August? Heck, let's do it in December. You know what I mean? Let's do it in September. I don't know. It's just, I don't like associating just the New Year. Like, you could work on yourself all the freaking time. And so, I guess, I guess, you know, this video is like geared towards people who want to do that resolution stuff. But I don't mean it to be for that intended purpose. I don't want it to be just for that. Because this is a, an everyday, an all life thing. You know, and I'm saying it to you as much as I'm saying it back to myself. Because this is something that, first of all, we pray for in our prayers without even realizing. But we're also constantly trying to do. And we're constantly trying to think about. You know, it just takes understanding what your best self even is. What your best life even is. And then taking the right steps to get there. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Like, if you want to make the right choices every day, you know what the right choices are. You know. You can use your brain in figuring that out. But it's not necessarily easy. It's Allah who makes it easy. Allah who makes it easy. And to you, it might seem like the most painful thing in the world. Like, for example... You are thinking about wearing the hijab and, you know, you're on the fence about it. And you think, oh my God, that's going to be the hardest thing I, I will ever do. I just can't bear the thought even. But it's Allah who makes it easy. It's Allah who put you into existence. How do you think you wouldn't be able to make it easy? Allah is capable of anything and everything. And when we forget that fact, it's, you know, not a good look for us. Because it's almost like we're thinking that, no, Allah is not capable. It's in the back of our brain somewhere. Shaitan is working hard to basically put that idea in your head. Allah is more than capable. Alhamdulillah. Today was um, a shorter video than usual, I think. But I really wanted to um, hone in on this aspect of bettering yourself and being your best self. But like from a different light, from a different perspective, from a more Islamic perspective. Because, because that is the needed perspective. That is the best perspective, in my humble opinion. Anyway, I hope you guys benefited from this video and I will see you in the next episode. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.